All right, talk. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can, hello? Okay. All right, so, okay, I'm just not, okay, you can mute yourself back. Okay. I'm just not hearing you over. So we're going to be starting today's service with song number 601, My God and I. My God and I go in the field together. We'll walk and talk as good friends should and do. We clasp our hands, our voices ring with laughter. My God and I walk through the meadows here. We clasp our hands, our voices ring with laughter. My God and I walk through the meadows the years that went before me. When heaven and hell were made for me to do, when all was but a dream of dim conception, what you come to life, her spared in glory see. When all was but a dream of dim conception, my God in life, earth there in glory sleep. My God and I will do for a Good friends should and do. Yes. to welcome everyone here this morning. Uh, good to see folks here in person. In fact, the crowd's a little bigger this morning. Uh, that's a good thing. Uh, part of that reason may be that we are honoring and celebrating the graduation of Jax and Molly. And uh, we want to congratulate them and uh, wish them well as they move on in their endeavors. Uh, and in that regard, we would like uh, everyone to hang around after services because we are having a party uh, to, to honor and celebrate Jackson and Molly. We're proud of you guys and uh, we want everybody to, to stay around. We're gonna have dinner on the grounds. How many of you remember when they used to call it dinner on the grounds? Well, we're actually gonna be outside under the awning and uh, uh, hopefully won't get blown away, but I think we'll have a good time. Uh, so please stay for that. 
If you haven't picked up a bulletin, please do so. There's a few uh, things in there you need to be made aware of, particularly those on our, our list of, of uh, sick folks and those that need our prayers because of health concerns. Uh, so, so pick up a bulletin. And uh, also there's a long list of birthdays for June. Uh, also a fairly long list of anniversaries. So June was a popular month. So for one reason or another, I don't know. Anyhow, we're glad to have you here. Uh, would you pray with me, please? Father, we give you thanks for your love, for your mercy, for the grace that you've extended to us through the, the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ. And Father, we give you all the honor and all the glory and all the praise for who you are, what you have done for us, and what you can do, continue to do for us each day of our lives. Father, you walk with us, you, you keep us safe, uh, you keep us in your, in your power. And Father, we just pray that uh, we will walk with you. We will hold your hand, Father, as we go through this life. Father, we are thankful for Jax and for Molly for their, their uh, uh, fulfillment of uh, uh, 12 years of school. And we pray, Father, that you would be with them as they continue their education and as they continue on in life. Father, we pray that you would be with us as a family here that meets here. Uh, continue to bless us, Father. Uh, may we do your will in this community and around this area. And Father, may others be brought to know you because of the efforts that are being done through this family here. Again, Father, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus, and the blood that he shed for us. We pray that you would be with those that are hurting. Uh, we pray that you would be with uh, this country, as again, we seem to be going through a time of civil unrest, and we pray that you would uh, just have a hand in, in calming that, Father. And Father, we know that, uh, that you will do that. Continue your love for us. Continue your blessings upon us. Forgive us when we stumble. And it's in the name of your precious Son, Jesus, that we offer this prayer. Amen. Good morning. Good to see everybody here this morning. If I can get this thing to work. Here we go. Our scripture today is Hebrews 4, 14 through 16. Therefore, since a promise remains of... In Oop, that's not right. That's not right. How about this one? Our compassionate high priest. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who's passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Next, we're going to be singing song number 837, I Need Thee Every Hour. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord, no tender voice like thine can be
Before communion, we are going to be singing song number 324, Alas and Did My Savior Bleed. As we've done in the past, we'll do both the bread and the drink at the same time, and you guys just bundle down through here after we say the Lord's Prayer. I mean, uh, thanks for the supper. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for this day. Thank you for the blessings of life. Thank you for the opportunity to be gathered together and give thanks for all that you do for us. Father, we now share this bread, this bread that represents 
your son Jesus Christ, body that he so willingly shed on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. Father, we just hope and pray that we do this in a manner pleasing to you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Heavenly Father, we uh, continue our thanks now. We're so thankful for you and your son, uh, for the great power and love that you have for us. Uh, your son was willing to come to this earth, and we know that he, he didn't have to. He uh, understands all the things that we face and the problems that we have and the, the things that we must overcome to, to be your children. But he came anyway, and he lived the humble life of a man and left us a perfect example to try to follow. We are so thankful for that great love. We're thankful that he shed his blood on the cross for us. And through that great sacrifice, we have the promise of an everlasting life with you in heaven if we obey your will. We thank you, and we give this thanks in the same name of your son, Jesus. Amen.
And next in our service, we're going to be singing Headline on Away. And that's song number 552, if you're following the books. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Oh, me and make me after thy children are released to children's church we're going to be singing uh, song number 414 anywhere with jesus <laughs> Jesus will be home, sweet home. 
Well, good morning. We do have a very good, big crowd here this morning, so I'm very thankful for that. And always, as we continue to look for and how to best be able to open up our building more and more for our services, we always just want to always continue to welcome back everyone as often as we get a chance to meet here. Um, I didn't We did not take a blessing for uh, the collection. Uh, so if you would at this time, I just want to go ahead and, I guess, take the convenience of that time and have a blessing over the collection as well. Our needing our attention. And Father, we know as students, that you may be able to help us to be able inside of our lives be able to not only put aside with a cheerful heart what has been deemed to what you've blessed us with but father what we may be able to look at this as a way to be able to help continue inside of the work of your kingdom and father the funds that are collected either here today or through other means father that we may be able to use that to the best of our ability is in your son's most holy name we do pray amen and of course, uh, it's still located in the back. Um, whenever uh, you have the convenience, we have a plate set up there. Or for anyone that is with us that is uh, with us online, you can still uh, bring that in uh, via the post office box to the church. Uh, with that, if you do still know of anyone that is uh, shut in at home or is uh, needing any kind of help with getting maybe Zoom uh, available at home or is just needing some help with that or is needing some communion supplies, uh, please be helping that with us. We have both readily available for it. Uh, if you're able to get in touch with someone that uh, either Deborah or myself are not able to get a hold of, uh, please just let us know and we will do our best to be able to help them out with that. Uh, as you can see, we were making some adjustments to the audio a little bit this morning. Uh, so just as we go through uh, with all we're going to try to help make this as best as we possibly can uh, for our worship services, especially for those that are uh, still cleaning themselves. Yes, that's another thing. Thank you, Danny. Uh, be here for worship. So be here to be here. And we'll fin finally finish Exodus. You know, this is the longest study I've ever done to try to finish one single book. You know, it's taken us, you know, three months to get through it. So I kid. So to do beyond what any kind of thing that we can have granted to us. And we know how God ends up answering prayer. Sometimes it's a yes, sometimes it's a no. Sometimes it's a maybe, but one thing that we concluded at the end of last week's message is that we know that this request is going through 
our high priest, the one that we talked about over in Hebrews chapter 4 this morning, our high priest that knows what's going on with our lives, the one that is able to deliver the prayer to our Father in order for it to be accomplished inside of his sight. And again, in, when he, in any way that he is able to accomplish that, we know it is through the power of our Savior, Jesus Christ, that that is given to him. And I love talking about this passage here in Hebrews 4, because it talks so much about how much Christ really does relate to us inside of our fears, concerns, all the things that we as humans end up experiencing throughout this existence. And he went through all of it and had one difference between you and I. He was without sin. And of course, that was because he was the sacrifice for our sins. That way we may be able to be redeemed back to the Father. But one of the greatest things that we have through our high priest, our compassionate high priest that sympathizes with everything that we are going through. If you remember, that's one of the things that we talked about a couple, things, a couple weeks ago when we were talking about his prayer in the garden. He was concerned, fearful, dreadful of the thing that he was going to have to go through. Who wouldn't be? The, the way that the Romans had set up being able to really perfect a long state of death, that would make me very nervous to accomplish that, but never will. It was according to the Father's will, and that's what he said at each time whenever he went to his Father in prayer. Not my will, but your will be done. So, of course, he knows exactly what we're going through. And we may be able to come. I love what verse 16 says. Coming, therefore, to the throne boldly. Confidence, if you remember, that's what we talked about last week for that word there. Confidence to come to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. What a beautiful passage that this ends up talking to us about with Jesus as our high priest. But there's one thing that's inside of that that I think oftentimes does not end up happening. Because we have been talking about prayer, because we have been talking about this relationship in which we can commune with the Father, receive power from on high, and especially through the Spirit that is working in through us, we still have to go. We still have to be able to come before the Father to his throne. With everything that we've talked about with prayer, the principles, our purpose, the power, we got to practice prayer now. And that's what's going to end up finishing out this, uh, this series of lessons, is being able to put our prayer life into practice, because that is what we are doing here inside of Hebrews 4, uh, 14 through 16, is we are coming to the Father through Jesus Christ in prayer. But we've got to start it. We've got to go to it. We've got to put that enacting inside of our lives. We've got to put this into our daily lives. So with whom do we pray? There's a couple of thoughts on that that I've noticed for while we've been going through this select series of messages here. First of all, Jesus encouraged the practice of praying alone praying in secret, and directly to our Heavenly Father. In Matthew 6, verses 5 through 6, we'll go and read that real quick. What we know inside of this passage, we studied this a couple of times inside of this series. And before he ended up giving the disciples the model prayer, he gave them this advice. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men. Surely I say to you, they have the reward, but you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Uh, that's a beautiful concept to think about whenever we are thinking about how to put our prayer lives into practice. It starts with what we do in our own private lives at home. Sure, you can come and do it here every first day of the week, but unless you're actually doing it at home daily, by yourself, that's where God is going to be looking for it. Because private prayer cultivates our spiritual nature through regular exercise and forms a close union and fellowship 
with our Heavenly Father. If you feel you may be lacking be, between that bond between you and God and the Father and the Spirit, and you're only just doing this one hour out of the week every single, every single week, well, no wonder you don't feel close to God because we still have to do that every day. This is a life style. This is a way we as Christians live and breathe every single day, dependent upon the Lord every single day, not just one hour, one time out of the week. You don't have a close bond with someone if that's the only way that you do that. And again, one of the reasons why we're trying to help utilize our Zoom casting now, so we may be able to still reconnect with one another through that. Think about it. Whenever you're praying by yourself at home in secret, maybe in your closet, maybe you took a little bit of the advice of the uh, movie that came out a couple of years ago. I think it was The War Room, I think. Maybe you took that advice. Maybe you have your own little secret little closet that you like to go and pray into. Fantastic. Because if you think about it, whenever you pray secret by yourself at home, it's just you and God. Time spent together in prayer that strengthens the bond that we have in our Father. Private prayer is a very true test also of your sincerity and devotion to God. You can come here every first day of the week and say, yeah, I'm the best Christian ever, but if you don't live that out in your daily life throughout the rest of the week, that's where the real test is. For what it said there in Matthew 5, 6, for what you do in secret, the Father will reward you openly. So we still have to be able to be one that's going to practice during the week. And you certainly aren't doing anything like that to please man. They can't see you if you're praying alone. So you're not trying to do it to have any kind of reward as the Pharisees and the scribes and those that were hypocrites with loud words praying that all men may be able to hear them. You're not going to get a reward for that. And you cannot do this to try to falsely impress God either because he's going to see right through you. He knows what our life is like, and he wants our all to be with him every single day. Private prayer is rewarded openly, like I said in Matthew 6, 6. Because the prayers, the answers to our prayers, will, seem, will be seen by others here and the hereafter. Because private prayer should be a priority in the practice of praying. You sit here and you might tell folks, man, I really do need some prayer for cousin such and such. They're going through a hard time. They're having some kind of surgery coming up and they need prayers for that. Maybe they have some kind of cancer or some other kind of trial or tribulation they're going through. And they need some help with that. And you tell them, I need some help with that prayer. How beautiful it is whenever we get up and we are able to announce to a congregation a prayer has been answered. It's only because we are able to continue to pray to our Father, not only whenever we gather, but whenever we do it privately at home. Jesus also taught about praying with others as well. In Matthew 18, verses 19 through 20, the beautiful principle that's been set forth inside of here. I'll put a little bit of it back into the context of what the passage is saying, but the principle that is put forth in this passage is very beautiful, especially what it says in verse 20. Assured, uh, assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth, you will bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, you will be loosed in heaven. That's a little bit of the context of the passage here. That's talking about where the authority of the apostles was going to come in later into play after the day of Pentecost. But I love the principle that's in verses 19 and 20. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Why are you asking something on behalf of the Father? Praying about it, right? And then verse 20, For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of them. You see, when the request of two or three are answered by our Father in heaven, such as maybe the example of restoring an erring brother, that's mainly the context of what the passage is in verses 15 through 18. But in the midst of prayer, Jesus himself is there. That's ultimately the principle that's talked about inside of that passage of Scripture. Because he is there whenever one or more, two or more, three or more, four or more, five or more, six or more, you can keep on going. Whenever we are all here together, Jesus himself is there for us and intercedes on our behalf and gives that Father, that prayer to the Father. 
You know, early Christians prayed together and often. In times of trouble, such as the examples in Acts 4, 23 through 24, and 12, 5 and 12, 16 and 25. Honestly, there's a whole lot more different scriptures I could have popped in through there, through the uh, book of Acts. Then also in times of departure, like Paul in Acts 20, verse 36. I love the scene that's put forth there. Whenever Paul has gone to Miletus and has assembled all the elders of the church at Ephesus there to tell him about the things that are going to end up encompassing to him while he's on his way to Jerusalem. They all came, hugged his neck, kissing and crying upon him, knowing that they're no longer going to see him and join with him in prayer for the trial that he was about to undertake. So immediate blessings are seen when God's people prayed together because a sense of strength and sweetness of fellowship is felt when we're all praying together. Praying with others should be done whenever possible as well. So what should we pray for? We, we've talked about with whom do we pray with, but what should we pray for? Well, here's a little bit of a list of things to be able to get you an idea of what we can pray for. We've talked about so much about what prayer does for us and how to pray, but what should we exactly pray for? Well, for ourselves, That's one thing to talk about. For our physical daily needs, as it starts off with the inside of the model prayer. In Matthew 6, 11, give us this day our daily bread. And for personal growth, in Christ-likeness and devotion to God. I love Colossians 1, 9 through 12. If you want to go over with that to me and read that with me. Colossians 1, verses 9 through 12. For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthening with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints and the light. How beautiful it is that Paul himself was giving that prayer for his fellow saints inside the church at Colossae for power, strength, and might. Maybe we also pray for our family. For our spouse, children, parents, sibling, a cousin that calls all the time that you're like, stop calling me. But you still pray for them because they're still your family. Pray for their nurturing and their growth and the teaching of the Lord, according to Ephesians 6, 4. Maybe our community. I love this idea. And this is a very pertinent verse, I think, especially what has transpired over the last week and a half, for, pre, for peace to prevail. Go over to Jeremiah 29 in verse 7. Jeremiah 29 verse 7. And seek the peace of the city where I've caused you to be carried away captive, and pray to the Lord for it, for in its peace you will have peace. I thought that was something very, very helpful for us in this time of need inside of our community, inside of our nation at this time. If we're praying for peace inside of our nation, therefore we'll end up having peace for ourselves, just as there, Jeremiah was also directed by the Lord. Pray for those that you're going to be living with inside of captivity, for if they are going to have peace, you'll have peace. Pray for the church. Pray for love and unity to prevail, such as is the example in uh, John 17, verses 20 through 21. We'll end up reading through that. John 17, 20 through 21. This is inside of the Lord praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. The unique thing about John's gospel is a little bit more than what Matthew, Mark, and Luke give to us. We know he went back and prayed three times and prayed the same thing. John gives us a little bit more idea of what the detail of that's going to be. John 17, 20 through 21. I do not pray for these alone, but for all who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one 
as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they may be able to be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. How beautiful it is that even Jesus Christ himself was praying for unity for all those that would end up coming afterwards. For the spiritual growth of each member, I love Philippians 1, 9 through 11 that talks about that. And also for the gospel to have a free course, to be able to have no resistance, no restraints put against it that may be able to flow freely, not only throughout the course of our church, but throughout our community as well. And of course, I've already kind of touched on community, but for our nation as well, for national repentance and consciousness of who God is, and for our leaders to rule wisely, for them to be able to realize that we are a nation only because of what God has allowed us to become. To pray for non-believers, for their salvation to become at hand. Now, this isn't to pray for them to be able to pray for salvation, but it's to pray for them to be able to open the way for the gospel message to be able to be preached to them. And also for the effort of those that are involved in teaching them as well. That's one thing that we cannot forget inside of our prayers as well. If we're asking for the gospel to be able to touch the hearts and lives of those that are inside of what we're trying to preach to inside of our community, we also need to be preaching for those that are also trying to reach out to those. Pray for the sick, for their restoration to health. One thing that we talked about last week in James 5, 14 through 15, the power that's inside of prayer right there. And whenever you are sick and heavy laden, burdened, you may be able to call upon the elders, anoint your head with oil, pray for the restoration of the health that you once had, but also for the spiritual strength and peace of mind that comes with coming and confessing to the Lord our sins inside of prayer both physical, spiritual, is granted inside of prayer. Or the poor and the oppressed, such as the homeless, the orphan, or the widow. And for those in other nations that are opposed by their own rulers or an outside influence, this all goes in hand in hand with who and what we should be praying for. So use a prayer strategy during the week. If you've had a doubt throughout all this, you might sit there and say, man, you know what, Ryan? You just gave me a whole lot of things to pray for, and I'm not even taking notes right now. I might be able to remember to ask you about the PowerPoint later, but you just gave me a whole bunch of stuff to pray for. What, what, how can I, in fact, start praying for others during the week, and how might I be able to incorporate this into my prayer life? Well, I love this. I found this on uh, uh, Pinterest, actually, was where I found this at. On Sunday, pray with the congregation over needs and requests that are brought to the congregations attending and to the one that is leading the prayer. Make it your own prayer as to what they're requesting on behalf of the Lord and pray with them and for them. I like to think of what we do on Sunday morning inside of our public prayers that we have. Pray with and for the person that is leading the prayer because it helps give you a prayer on steroids to God, I think. Because think of how many people are here. And if they're all praying with that one person for that prayer to be answered to God, oh, so much prayer there to God. On Monday, pray for your family, both the immediate and extended family, uh, family members that you have for their physical and spiritual well-being. Tuesday, pray for the church. Pray for members in the local congregation and for those throughout the world in missionary fields and different churches inside of different places. We've already seen a little bit of some of that experience happen here at this congregation. On Wednesday, pray for your community, for those that are leaders in the community, and for your neighbors. On Thursday, pray for the nation, for elected officials and the efforts to bring peace and righteousness to the nation. On Friday, pray for the world. Pray for world peace and for nations that are closed off to the gospel. And then Saturday, pray for the afflicted, for the poor, homeless, jobless, those in prison, those who are sick and in hospitals and care facilities, for widows, single mothers and fathers, orphans, the list can go on and on with that. You want a little bit more of a simpler way to pray? In the morning, pray for your family. In the evening, pray for the church. In the afternoon, pray for everybody else. 
whatever way that you can think of through what we've talked about with prayer over the last five sermons that we've had throughout this entire series for this month is pray. That's why I can conclude out of this here this morning is that you just pray. Develop a strategy that suits you. And I also suggest maybe list having a journal so that you may be able to help keep track of what the Lord has been blessing you with. You asked for such and such to be healed three, four months ago. You've already forgot about them. Then you get a call one day and you say, oh, hey, whatever that was, it's been fixed. Be able to pray. But ultimately what I can say is to pray and do so with a lot of the verses that we've talked about throughout this entire series. Do so always in everything, earnestly, being vigilant without ceasing and with thanksgiving. Pray to God. It's the way that we commune with Him. It's the way that He is able to allow us to be able to have our fears, worries, and anxieties relieved. If you remember in Philippians 4, 6 through 7, that's the ultimate answer to our anxieties is to pray for a peace that is beyond all surpassing. So I bring forth the invitation here this morning. Whether it being that Maybe your prayer life is needing some kind of help here this morning, giving you quite a bit, a few tools to be able to help out with that. But if you need prayer on being able to execute that through the week, that you don't falter on it. Maybe that you need prayer for something else that you haven't been praying for and you need your brothers and sisters to pray with you for you. We can do that for you here this morning. Or if there's someone here this morning that does need to be able to have prayers of remission of sin, brought forth to them. You're an erring Christian and you know what you should be doing, and yet you've fallen away from the Lord. We could pray with you and for you with that as well. Or maybe there's one here this morning that's needing to start that relationship off with God. And you need your sins washed away through baptismal waters. Whatever your request, whatever your need is, let it be known as we sing our song of encouragement, just a little talk with Jesus.
uh, to also at that time, it's kind of customary uh, that we've done this every year for them to have also uh, prepared something and say something as well. Um, so, uh, yay, be looking for that. Hopefully, I don't know, or maybe they didn't tell, okay, or maybe not. <laughs> Just tell them you love them, that, that, that'll work. Uh, <clears throat> And then we'll take care of that, and then we'll have lunch afterwards. So thank you again for everyone for being here. Now I'll take us away with the last song. Too. So before we release with a prayer, we are going to be singing song number 525, He Knows Just What I Need. My Jesus knows when I am lonely, He knows each day. Father, we thank you so much for all that you do for us. Father, you bless us so much in this life. When you give us so many things in this life, it's so easy for us to take it for granted. Uh, uh, you bless us with our families, with our children, with our parents, with all of these people that you've surrounded us with that love us and that we love. We live in a world where things happen so amazing that we, we don't even appreciate it. The sun comes up in the morning, it sets in the evening. The rains come and we plant a seed and crops grow. All around you, you see life springing up, puppies and kittens and children. Uh, 
Father, uh, the blessings of this life are so amazing. We're so grateful for every moment. Of it. And yet, Father, in the midst of all of this, there's a pandemic. Uh, the stock market has crashed. Unemployment is, is skyrocketing. Uh, people are getting sick. People are dying. Uh, our, our leaders disrespect each other, promote violence, and our streets are erupting in violence. It'd be so easy for us to be discouraged, Father, and yet we know we live in a fallen world, and our example is Jesus is our Savior, and that you are a God, and that you are in control. We just ask, Father, to help us always keep our focus where it belongs. Father, we come together on Sundays to celebrate and honor you as our God, and to celebrate Jesus as our Savior, and as our brother. But this Sunday, Father, we also come to celebrate the accomplishments of a couple of young people that have dedicated 12 years of their life. Father, we ask that you be with Molly and Jax, no matter where life takes them, that you bless them, that you guide them. So much lays before them, so many decisions about their education and about their career and about marriage and family. So many things, Father, we just ask that you be with them, that you guide them in these decisions, that you help them always know that they have a church family that loves them, uh, that prays for them and uh, are proud of them. Uh, and Father, we ask uh, that you be with each of us, that you help us live lives that are God-honoring. Uh, and also, Father, we ask that you be with Jay Mackey and his surgery that's coming up, uh, that things will go well for him. Father, we thank you so much for being our God and for the gift of your Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. 